back to our final problem. In week 7, we are on mystery in 50ville. A thief is in 50ville and the evidence has been collected and by some miracle the only way to solve the crime is by searching a SQL database because instead of actually reviewing the evidence they placed it in a database that we have to extract it from. So we're going to use a couple of SQL queries here to help find it out. We're also going to keep a running log for our answers.txt. I'll be doing that on a sidebar that I have open for you. There are a lot of ways to solve this. The way I'm doing it is going to be kind of a top down as I find one bit of information I'll be exploring it and so on. There's also a lot of different SQL queries you can run. Stay tuned at the end of this if you want to see some of the alternative SQL queries you can run because it's going to make the video a little bit longer. I put on the click screen the actual length of this video to solve it. There's going to be some bonus content after my end screen. So stay tuned if you want to see that. The first thing it tells us to do, and this is where everyone should be starting, is that we should be investigating the crime scene reports. All we know is the date, July 28, 2021, and it took place on Humphrey Street. Those are going to be important to run some of our queries looking for specific dates, times, and locations. And you see here that they want you to start with crime scene reports. That's where we're going to start too. So we're going to get into that. Let's see what that looks like. Now before we get into this, I want to encourage you guys to do something. I want to encourage you to open your 50ville.db. You're going to click open anyway, and then you're going to click PHP Lite Admin. When you do that, you'll be taken to another page that looks like this. This page is important because consider this to be a root file. All of the crime scene reports, as an example, are here. You can click on crime scene reports, and when you do that, you'll actually see the type of SQL structure that that one has. The reason that's important is as we're going through these, I already have knowledge of these because I've reviewed them and I've made my own notes, but you'll see each table that these have, and you'll see what kind of data they store. In the crime scene reports, we have ID, year, month, day, street, and description. Once we know that, now you can do the similar thing too if you go ahead and go here and do your dot schema, but it's going to be a little bit longer. So having that PHP Lite admin is pretty helpful for people who are new to SQL just to see what's in those things. Now your dot schema is going to tell you that as well. So having one of those two things available to you is going to be beneficial. I personally, when I first started, used the PHP Lite admin. Knowing a little bit more about SQL now, having the dot schema works just as well because it lets you know the structure. We have ID, caller, receiver, year, month, day, duration, and that's in our phone calls. So it does break it down in your dot schema, but if you need a more visual representation, you can open it in PHP Lite to check that out. So the first thing it asked us to do was to take a look at the crime scene reports. Our query is going to be as follows. Select from crime scene reports where street is equal to Humphrey Street. Now you'll see why I have this little sidebar here in a second. We're going to punch that in, and when we find that, you see all of the crime scene reports from Humphrey Street. Now you could narrow it down and select on July 28th, but there's not so many reports that you can't figure it out. You'll see right here, theft of the CS50 duck took place 1015 at Humphrey Street Bakery. So we're going to type in what we know here. So it's at the bakery. We already knew it was Humphrey Street, so that's fine. Interviews were conducted today with three witnesses at the time. Each of their interview transcripts mentions the bakery. So that is important. That's why we marked down bakery. That's going to be the next thing that we look into. So we're going to clear that, and we now know that there's a bakery, right? So we're going to put bakery witnesses. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to investigate the transcripts from those that mention the bakery because we know where it took place. So that's going to be select from interviews where the transcript is like and remember we need the wildcard before and after bakery and when we do that we find three interviews on the 28th. Again, you could have narrowed it down further. I didn't do that because there's not so many interviews that we needed to narrow it down to the 28th just yet. We see here that sometime within 10 minutes, Ruth has an investigation, Eugene and Raymond. Kiana here is on 517. That doesn't fall in line with the date of the robbery. So within 10 minutes of the theft, I saw the thief get into a car in the bakery parking lot and drive away. Security footage from the bakery parking lot. So we're going to say Ruth bakery footage and then we're gonna say Eugene don't know the thief's name but it was someone I recognized walking to the ATM so we have ATM on Leggett GGETT -E Street and then we have Raymond and Raymond has a short phone call and a flight ticket 
and now we're going to investigate these things one at a time. So let's start with Ruth. So first thing we're going to do is witness one, Ruth, yours should be a little bit more comprehensible. They should show the flow of why you're going there. So witness one, Ruth said there was bakery footage. So now we need to search bakery footage that's specific to the time and date. So we know it was on 728 and she said within 10 minutes of the robbery. So in order to do that, we're going to type this. It's going to be select from bakery bakery security logs where year equals 2021 and month equals 7 and day equals 28 and hour equals 10 and minute is between 15 and 25 because we know we need the 10 minute window between those two times after the robbery took place and again if you're wondering where I got bakery security logs that's in your PHP light or it's in your schema right so we're gonna drop that in here and now we have some information. Now this information I'm not yet going to copy into the database because there's going to be a different way to store this. We have eight license plates that we can now match to a person that we can further investigate. And in order to do that we're going to check against license plates and we're going to run this query here. So now we're going to have this table. I'm going to clear this one out and we're going to run this query and all we've done is we took the first query you'll see here from bakery security logs year and month between 10 and 15 now we still have that year month day 10 and 15 all we've done now is we've selected a person's name from the bank security log BSL activity which we declare here as BSL then we look at the BSL license plate year month day hour and minute when we do that we can add the names of the people that are on these license plates. It's the same table. All we've done is another query to add the names to it. So we're beginning to narrow down the search. One of the people we're looking for is in this list. Now we can move on to Eugene's information. So we've investigated pretty much to the full extent of what Ruth gave us regarding the bakery. So let's check, check witness two regarding ATM. And we're going to run a pretty simple query here where the ATM select from ATM transactions where the ATM location is Leggett Street that was in the witness testimony year month and day is 728 when we do that we're gonna find these withdrawals and deposits now remember that deposits not gonna matter for us and these account numbers and now to investigate that further we can add the name of the owner of that account using a similar query so I'm gonna put here add name of withdrawals from ATM and we're going to use this query. Now again, we had from ATM where the ATM location is Legacy Street, so we're still using that query right here. All we're doing is adding on to it. So once we do that and we add a person's name from ATM transactions, we join their bank account number on account number and we join people and person ID. Now again, all of these are in your PHP Lite. All we're doing is adding to the table using our SQL knowledge. So now we have only the withdrawals only the account numbers and we have these names now we could start cross-referencing now but it's probably a little bit early so we're going to type a note here witness three phone call investigation and we're going to type a query regarding phone calls so we know from Raymond's testimony that the phone call was only about 60 seconds long so here's what we're going to do we're going to select all the phone calls that are under 60 seconds on that day in that time and that returns about one two three four five six seven eight about nine phone calls now all we have right here are numbers so if we want to add the person's name to that we take a very similar SQL code here and we're just gonna add their name so I'm gonna put a note in here add names to call list of callers and that query is going to be like this. Again, very similar. We already had select from phone calls, year, month, day, and time. We're still going to use that select callers, receivers, year, month, day, time, and duration. And when we do that now, we'll see a similar return, except this time we've added all of the names to it. So now we have all of the phone calls that were under 60 seconds. We have all of the cars that left the bakery 10 minutes after the crime. And we have all of the ATM transactions that were withdrawals from that date. But for now, one of the other questions they asked us is where are they going? So we're still working on who the thief is and we're really close to finding out, but we also need to know where they're going. They said 
they wanted the first flight out of town. Now when you look at the flights, by taking a quick look at your schema here, you'll notice that the flights only have IDs of the destination airport and arrival and departure. So they'll actually show up as numbers. So the first thing we really need to do is figure out what is the origin airport ID of 50ville. So that's going to be the first thing that we look into. And again, you could have found that on your PHP or you could have looked for it in your schema. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to explore airports. Explore airports to find 50ville. And that's going to be an easy one here. You're just going to type in this, and it's going to give you all of the airports. Now, again, you could have shortened it up, and you could have made it where airports equal to 50ville. But there's such a short list of cities here that seeing the full list isn't going to stop you from finding 50ville. So we're looking for CSF, and it's ID number 8. So now we know that we're looking for departures out of ID 8. So we can combine that knowledge, because if you put in 50ville, you wouldn't have been able to find it on the flights, because it would have been identifying as 8 not as 50ville, but now we know that information and we can take it forward. So now we found 50ville ID and where I'm going to put 8 here and we're going to put explore flights out. Now I did a little something extra on this you don't have to do but it's going to be helpful. I ordered it by hour and minute because remember we're looking for the first flight out of town, right? So we're selecting flights from origin name as origin airport destination full name as destination airport from flights F we're joining the airports we're joining the destination and we're ordering it by the hour and minute and when we punch that in here you're gonna see it only came back with origin airport 8 leaving out of 50 ville by the time of day using military time which is why it goes past 12 the first flight out is 50 ville to LaGuardia Airport now I don't know how common the knowledge is but LaGuardia Airport's based in New York so there's probably other ways to look that up there may even be ways in the schema to check that but I happen to know that LaGuardia is in New York it is one of the largest airports I think in the world or one of the busiest anyway so we know that they're going to LaGuardia in New York so the first thing we're gonna do right here the escape to I'm just gonna put New York and you can put maybe LaGuardia here and going back to our log now that I know where they're going I'm gonna take the information that I got from the three witnesses and I'm gonna put combine info from all three testimonies and that query is gonna look like this a lot of these are redundant so take a second here and look at these because these commands we have already done we're just combining them and when we do that to see who remains as a possibility, there's only two people that are still possible for the three witness testimonies that were at the bakery, that withdrew from the ATM, and that made a phone call less than 60 seconds. So how do we narrow it down? Well, one such way is to look at the passenger list. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to put here, narrow down from Bruce, Diana, who is on flight and this one's actually gonna be a little bit simpler than the last one we're just gonna look at select people's names from people we're joining the passengers and their passport numbers where the flight is 36 which we got from our previous information when we punched this in here when we ran the flight information here we got the ID was 36 that's the first flight out of LaGuardia Airport and I should have put a note here flight out 36 LaGuardia New York so now we know what flight they're on we collected that information and we know it's Bruce or Diana and we need to hope honestly that only one of them's on this plane right now and when we do a search and their name has to be Bruce or Diana and match their passport number we know now that Bruce is our thief. And we're going to go to our answers log and we're going to plug that in. Our thief is Bruce. But now we need an accomplice. They want to know who Bruce called on that 60 second phone call. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our phone calls and I'm going to do a couple different things here to find them. So let's take a look. Who did Bruce call? And I'm going to run this query. 
select name as receiver from phone calls where person one is on the caller and their phone number and person two is on the phone number where person's one name is Bruce and on 2021 2028 the duration was less than 60 seconds when we run that query you're gonna find out that Batman called Robin that's right your hero is the CS50 villain so we're gonna plug in Robin right here and that is gonna give you the answers that you guys need so I'm going to run a real quick check for you. So we're going to dot exit or control D. That way we can clear it out. We're going to run our check. And there you go. Mystery solved. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you. This is week seven. That was 50ville. I am Devin. As always, you are awesome. Hang in there. We'll see you soon. Stay tuned for the bonus content. All right, for those of you guys who stayed in, we're going to kind of show you some alternatives here real quick. So we're going to go over some information. When we found the license plates, right, this is the query that we use. So let's get into SQLite 3 db This is the query that we ran originally, and that gave us our license plates. Now, there's an alternative way to do pretty much everything in here including solve this whole mystery you could have done it absolutely differently than I did one of the first things I did was this so it's a bit longer here but it gives us a shorter return so there's not much as much information on the table that we need to look for again the information wasn't so inundating that we didn't really need to shorten it down when we did the ATMs the first thing we did was this one here but if you want an alternative way to do that you actually could have done it on a few more lines if you really wanted to and you could have done something like this that's gonna give you the same output we just kinda of put the ands on a different line it's a little bit easier to read and actually if you wanted to have just a single column you didn't really want all of this extra information you could have run this and had you run that, you would have only been given the names of the people that did withdrawals on that day at that ATM. The other thing we could have done but we didn't is that at the second step of this, we could have said, hey, who still remains as a suspect? Because we've already got two pieces of information. Who's left? And we could have found that out by running a combination of the first and the second bits of information via this code here. We would have found then that Bruce, Diana, Iman, and Luca were still a possibility. And as you know, we narrowed it down to Bruce and Diana before finding out it was, Di or it was Bruce because Diana wasn't on the flight. Also, when we did flights, we did it this way. But if you're new to SQL and you wanted a bit more information, you could have put a little bit more in there. You could have done something just like this and it would have given you a similar output. Remember, we only needed the information right here, LaGuardia 36. Now, these were not ordered. I didn't do the order by. So you would have had to have looked at time, which again, there's not so much information here that you couldn't have done that. And then you would have found what we have there. Finally, the last thing we're gonna do is that there is another query you could have run instead of kind of doing a couple more steps like I did. If you wanted to run at the end of this thing, and you wanted to join all of the information you had, you could have put in this entire query right here. Now you can't see it on the screen, but right below that it says name and Bruce. So this one query actually solves it because we've taken the passengers on the flight where the phone call was on a day that was less than 60 seconds, where we had an ATM withdrawal on Leggett Street, and that person was in the bank security logs between X and Z and it only spits out Bruce. Let me move this up here and you guys can see it. So there is a query that runs all of it. Now that would have left you with only one more thing to do and you again SQL could have programmed a way to figure out who he called because that one was so long. I would have just run a second query showing that Bruce called Robin just like that. Thanks guys for sticking it out for the bonus content. SQL is a really powerful tool once you start to learn it. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. Appreciate you. We'll see you soon.